Hi, this is Phil Shapiro. I am talking with Serena Fletcher, who is Administrative Librarian in the Delaware Division of Libraries. I met her on Twitter and I found out she was doing some stuff with makerspace kinds of things in the Delaware Libraries. So Serena, how did you come to your current job? I was originally hired to be an assist to be a system administrator along with another I was going to be the assistant system administrator to work on the Delaware Library catalog and I was sitting in a webinar with my colleagues here at the Division of Libraries and they, they mentioned this word makerspace and my ears popped up I was like makerspace what's that and since then I've been very interested in what a makerspace is and how to bring it to Delaware's libraries and to Delaware's public. You were telling me that there was originally in the Delaware libraries there was these job centers and they've changed their name now. What's the new name? The new name we now call them Inspiration Spaces. Inspiration, inspiration Spaces. Space, yeah. And what is the purpose and function of an Inspiration Space? These are spaces, the spaces, they were formerly job centers through a BTOP grant and you know the, the funding ran out or the funding ended, that grant period ended and so now we returned these four spaces, inspiration spaces and they still cover job center functions but we've incorporated as well entrepreneurship, small business, technology, lifelong learning and maker spaces into these, their physical spaces in four of our libraries distributed throughout the state. But really, I think of all of our libraries as inspiration spaces, even if they don't have a dedicated space. That's interesting. Now, have you formed any connections with regular makerspaces, the non-library makerspaces in Delaware? We have, and we're continuing to do so. We already have a partnership with the Barrel of Makers, which is a maker group out of North Wilmington, or out of Northern Delaware, Wilmington and Newark. And they are working on some programs with us and teaching Scratch to school kids on the weekends at six of our libraries. And hopefully we'll have more programs with them. And we're trying to find more maker spaces who consider themselves makerspaces in Delaware, particularly in Sussex and Kent counties where we haven't identified a group yet. Got it, interesting. Now you were telling me you like SketchUp, the 3D drawing software. Uh, how is Delaware Libraries using SketchUp so far? We are go we haven't yet, but we have plans to put it on every public computer in every public library. And we're putting SketchUp and Blender, because I understand that, you know, SketchUp is great for introductory 3D modeling and then people who want to go further can go on using Blender. They're both free so we're able to download it and install on every computer so that people anybody can go to one of our libraries and play around, learn it and you know use it for whatever they want whether they want to continue to print their, their model they can go to one of our libraries that has a 3d printer or just keep keep it as a you know a digital sketch for some other purpose tell me some of that story about 3d printing and the delaware libraries oh gosh this is a long story <laughs> we bought a couple years ago we bought eight Ultimaker Originals as kits, and we thought, yeah, we'll, we'll put them together, no problem. So they, after, you know, back and forth with customs, because these, these kits came from the Netherlands at the time, and back and forth through customs, they came, and it was very hard to put them together. It was challenging because I was basically doing it myself with, with just a little bit of assistance, and I, I really, the whole time I kept saying, I am not a mechanical engineer. I don't know how to do this. And my colleagues would say, you can do it, Serena. You know, we know it's a new technology, and I kept saying back, no, it's not the technology part. It's the it's the pulleys and the and the levers and things. It's all mechanical. I'm I'm not getting this right. But one day I was talking it over with a colleague, and it just made sense. And I can fix them very easily now. You know, I what's the word? Homing them and squaring them. I kind of understand the Ultimakers now. Okay. And that that is the story of the Ultimakers. But we've since acquired maker bots and we're trying out another time another kind we're we're trying to find the best 3d printer for our public libraries and unfortunately i think that it's such a new technology for this purpose that there isn't a best model or brand i think they all require a lot of tinkering and patience and experimentation that's interesting tell me about your recent trip out to illinois you were there at some kind of library gathering 
I was. I Delaware was invited to participate as apprentices in I Lead USA, which stands for Innovative Librarians Explore, Apply, and Discover, which was designed by the Illinois State Library and funded by an IMLS grant, which is the Institute of Museum and Library Science, which is part of the U.S. Department of Education. And we went as apprentices, which basically meant that we were we watched, we observed, along with several other representative li- state library staff from other states and saw the process of this nine-month program where library staff in, D- in Illinois formed teams of five people and identified a common community need that could be addressed through an innovative use of technology and through keynote speakers and workshops and project team time. We saw these these teams create their project, develop their project, and then at the end of the nine months, they presented it to the group. And it, it was a very transformative experience. It was, it was a wonderful tri- experience. And we're now bringing that program to Delaware in 2015. That's really interesting. Tell me more about the entrepreneurship angle for the libraries. Oh, that's my that's my weak angle. I don't know too much about it. I work with the staff who do entrepreneurship and small business in the inspiration spaces. I work more with uh, maker spaces Got it. than okay. entrepreneurship. But it is, I think, really interesting that the library is a place where businesses might get born because a business is an idea and libraries are homes of ideas. So. Oh, sure. I went to a conference a couple weeks ago up in Wilmington and they talked about technology and how it's used in medicine and how it's used in education and how it's used in entrepreneurship and venture capitalists. And it was it was really enlightening for me and I'm beginning to see a lot of connections how libraries might want to become entrepreneurs themselves or librarians might want to become entrepreneurs in the library world, you know, kind of adopt that business model and see where see where it goes. I think it'd be very interesting, not just to promote it for our public, but to embrace it ourselves. Yep, because I guess it's a frame of mind. Mm -hmm. And it's a different frame of mind from traditional library service. Mm -hmm. So that's really interesting. So you're currently looking for some volunteer instructors, I think, for Blender, right? I'm, I'm always looking for volunteer instructors for anything, but okay. particularly for SketchUp and Blender. SketchUp and because, Blender, okay. Yes. We put, we put the programs, you know, we put them in the libraries on the computers and patrons see them there. And I think some of them want to learn how to use it and ask to be taught. Right. And so we want to bring in people to do that. I should maybe send you one of the people who came to the Silver Spring Maker Fair last year. There was a three-year-old boy who came to the table that I was at where I was teaching SketchUp. And he was pretty good at SketchUp. And I asked his parents, how old is your son? They go, well, he's three. And I said, well, he's kind of good at at 3D design. So maybe Mm -hmm. I'll send you over a three-year-old to be one of your instructors. That would be great. <laughs> we uh, we also have Minecraft Edu on our on our in our libraries that we administer. We being the division of libraries, and we you know all the library staff are like, how do you play? How do you do this? And we're telling them just just make it available, open the program, and the kids will know how to use it. And one of my colleagues volunteered her nine year old daughter to teach us. Oh, that's that's a good thing. Yeah, that's yeah. a good thing. A child shall lead them. So you must be pretty in- happy with your current job in that it's taking the Delaware libraries in a new direction. Yes. And Delaware is a small state, so maybe more is possible when you don't have to coordinate quite as many branches and counties and stuff. Maybe being small is an advantage. I definitely want to see it as being, I definitely do see it as an advantage. And I'd like, uh, you know, the rest of my colleagues in the libraries to see it as such. We're a great pipeline or framework for the state, for all kinds of innovation to happen. And we're already all connected. All the public libraries are connected under the common library catalog. So we're already all working together, doing great things. That's really interesting. So I'm talking today with, uh, this is Serena Fletcher. I'd love to talk to you again in maybe about a year and see what's happened since. Okay, that'd be really nice. Thank you.